everybody, my name is Axel the Baxalotl and welcome back to reading Morganite! Oh my gosh! We're so close! One more after this one! Oh, I'm getting more and more excited as I get closer to the end. Because I want to be done. I want to be done so bad. But anyways, we're moving on to chapter 20. Chapter 20, The Power of Friend. I sat down on the rock that Sonia was laying behind, and I looked at her, and felt sad, for myself and for her. She looked so normal past the crown, and I remember all the times we had together in elementary school. I was friends with Delilah and Holly for about a year after I became half gem. They teased me all the time about how pink my face was, they thought it was blush, and how my hair was pink. It was like they were the only people in the world, and it was choke and it was choke i don't even know what you're trying to say here and i wanted to cry every day one day though a new girl came to school class i would like you to meet your new classmate sonia ellenberg my teacher in second grade announced just then i gasped when a really pretty girl entered she had long light blonde hair which was down and she had a black hairband with a black ribbon in her hair her eyes were light blue like the sky in summer and my heart felt like it was stuck in my chest. I couldn't believe my eyes. She stood at front of class that morning and smiled to us. Hello, I'm new here. I'm very excited to get to know you all. I hope I can be friends with all of you. Then she sat down in the empty seat in front of me. We both sat by the window on the right side of class. I thought her hair smelled nice. I felt Delilah poke me hard from the side. And I turned, and it was Delilah. You just said that. Who was smirk meanly. She sat beside me on my right. Your face is all red, Morgan, she said, tease. Holly giggled beside her on her right. What, do you have a crush? No, I snapped, but quiet, because I didn't want anyone to look at me and think I was weird. Ha, huh, you think a girl like her would like a girl like you? You'd have to be crazy, Delilah laughed. You're ugly and fat. You're a pig. No one would ever love you back. I bet even your parents don't love you. Holly kept laughing with her. Tears welt up in my eyes until they stung. I felt like an idiot. Excuse me, there was a shout, and sudden Sonia was stand up, and she looked at Delilah with a fire in her eyes. You shouldn't speak to your classmates like that. Terrible. You're the ugly one. Ugly on the inside. What's your problem, Quest? Delilah. Mad. You're new to this class. You don't even know who I am. Morgan's our friend. We can treat her how we want. Yeah, besides, we're not wrong, are we? Look at her, Holly agrees. She is beautiful. Leave her alone. She doesn't need your comments and your harass. Don't care what you say you are. You aren't her friends if you treat her like that, Sonia said. You both leave her alone. Bullying is not okay. Even if I'm new here, I won't stand for it. Delilah hissed and looked defeat, and she stomped out of classroom. Holly looked shocked and shoved her face in book to hide. I was flabbergasted. It was amazing the power she had, and I started to cry tears of relief. Sonia looked at me. Once Delilah and Holly stopped bothering me and smiled, my heart had w wigs. Are you okay? She asked me. Uh, yes, I should be fine. My voice was barely happened because I was so shocked and scared still. Thank you, Sonia. It's no problem. I can't stand to see people get treated like that, she said. Anyways, the teacher told you, but my name is Sonia Ellenberg. Can I ask for yours? Um, yes, I'm Morgan Thomas. It's, um, very nice to meet you, I answered. My face was starting to turn red again, but I was surprised when Sonia didn't laugh at me like Delilah or Holly would have. Ooh, this, this feels very rushed. The grammar is exceptionally bad in this chapter. I keep getting my words mixed up and, and switching letters around. It's awful. It's nice to meet you two. This might seem forceful, but can we become friends? You seem like a very nice girl, Sonia asked. I nodded and she smiled. We exchanged phone number and email and it was set from then. I learned later that Delilah left school when she left the class and was so angry that she beat up an upperclassman who was in recess. She got sent to juvie and I never saw her again, so I was happy. Holly looked depressed for a long time after before she disappeared too, had moved. After that, we were inseparable. I even showed my gem and told her about my half-gem. 
and took her to meet the crystal gem. She wasn't scared. She was just super impressed and excited. Kind of like Ronald. She had interest in aliens and stuff. She didn't think it was weird. She was just so happy and I was glad. I met John that next year because he was in class with me and Sonia and called him Doobie because of an inside joke. But we were never as close. Now he was all I had left though. Was it bad to put so much time into spending with Sonia? Now she was gone. It didn't even matter. This would keep happening. Not all friends could last forever. Even if I was half gem and would live for a long time, that wasn't the same for my human friends. Doobie would die long before me and Sonia was already dead before she became an agate. So... Was there a point? If this would happen to all my friends, why should I make them? If there were, if they're all just going to leave me, drop me in mud pits and die. You see, you're trying to write her having an existential crisis about like even making friends to begin with, but it's written so horribly, I can't even feel bad for her. I just, I'm just annoyed and I want her to stop talking. <laughs> Morgan? I jumped and almost screamed when I heard a familiar voice. I look down. Sonia is gone. I turn around, feel a presence. My mouth hangs open. When I see it's Sonia, she had got up and got behind me in the time I was stunned by how normal she looked. She had that clock on still, but other than that it and the crown, she was the same. Even the look on her face, it wasn't evil anymore. I wouldn't trust that for the life of me. Sonia! I couldn't stop and I ran to hug her. I was crying. I was so happy, even if I knew in my heart that she was in Himitsu. She was the Sonia I loved. Even if she could hurt me, she sounded the same and looked the same. I remember now, she said, hug me back. What happened? Everything in school? How? What? That makes no sense. None of this makes any sense. I'm so sor sorry to... Got you killed, I sobbed. I didn't mean it to happen. Please forgive me. Of course I forgive, Morgan. I could never hate you. All of a sudden, there was a bright light. My insides started floating, and it felt my body start to melt. But it was good melt. I was warm, and everything felt good. All I could see was white, and I felt different. Then everything turned black. Oh, you are not telling me they just fused. Did these two just fuse? I swear to God. Oh my god, they did fuse. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, we're on to chapter 21 now. I'm not afraid of anything anymore. Great! Great! I'm almost done. I can get through this. I can do it. I'm so close. It felt so great being... Zexorite? That's what I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna bother looking it up. I don't care that much anymore. I'm just tired. Like, the first, the first good couple of chapters were pretty bad, but as you continue reading, it just gets worse and worse. The grammar gets worse, the story gets worse. It's so insanely rushed. It's bonkers. I can't even comprehend what's really happening anymore. There's no real plot to this story. Like... At first it was about, like, Morgan turning into a gem, and then suddenly it became about the Himitsu, right? But even then, they were, like, more of a side quest than anything. And now, we're here with Sonya, like, and they're fused now, for some reason. And now and now this is all about, like, Morgan and, and Sonya's friendship or whatever the fuck. I don't know what's happening anymore. There's no real plot to this story. Being Ze Zexorite with Sonya. Yeah, we're going with that. We were so confident and close. When we form together, we go to the ground with a boom and knock stones and dust all over the cave. We were almost too big to fit, but that didn't matter. We fell on our butt and laughed. We sounded so... Tattle... Fells? Tattle fells and confident. See, that's what I mean. Like, what are you even saying? But we can't stay cooped up in a cave all day, we decide. So we bust on the ground and came back out on the surface. It was total nighttime and the clouds went way to see the Milky Way. So we knew we could have fun without getting in trouble with anything. We laughed and danced off. We were as tall as buildings, basically. We did a pirouette at Sonino's ballet. And we went to the ocean, which was back. We looked in the water and gasped. We were so beautiful. We had light pink eyes, like crystal pink gold hair and a wavy ponytail like my pigtails 
and a beautiful dress like a princess with a cloak. And Sonia's big agate crown and my pink choker made us look like a queen. We didn't even have extra limbs. We squeed and backstroked deeper in the ocean till we were deep. We felt a bump at our leg and we looked down and it's a huge shark. We pet the shark since we both like sharks and a bubble it for the temple. His name is Douglas II, we said. Why would you? No, leave the shark alone. Put him back. Put Douglas down right now. Put him back. But isn't this one a different kind of shark from Douglas was? Somebody in the back of my head said. Oh yeah, I guess he could be Ernesto then. No, put him back. Put the shark back in the water. Leave him alone. We laugh and jump real high out of the ocean and make Beach City all wet. What? Ronaldo, who was look out for UFO in the night sky on his roof, looked in his binocular and screamed before he was totally soaked and went inside complaining. We kept running around and dancing through the town and hugging ourselves until we got tired and rested on the cliff holding hands and laugh lightly. I miss you so much, Morgan, said Zexerai as Sonia's voice. I miss you too, Sonia, every day, I said in my voice. I miss you every day. I love you. Morgan, I'm sorry, said Sonia. I didn't do this just because I love you. I haven't been completely honest with you. What? Zexerite sat up and looked up, alarmed. Sudden, our eyebrows opened to become light blue eyes. Sonia's eyes. The bottoms were mine, and I looked up at her in surprise. Before I could stop, we split. I fell to the ground, cringe a bit, but I felt different. I looked at myself, and I see normal skin. Both arms, my hair. I started to cry, but Sonia came over and stopped me, looking like she did in elementary school. Just like it. This is why I fused with you, she said. Himitsu are great people and wonderful friends. They were able to help bring me back to life, and they helped me look and feel human again, so nobody thinks I'm a freak. Now you can look like a human too. You must be so happy. Come to think, I never actually seen you like this. You were pink when I first met you. She laughed and came to hug me, but I scoot away, hugging myself. I feel so much softer now, more vulnerable. What the fuck is happening? What is going? Nothing makes sense anymore! What is happening? No, this is absurd! Freak? You think the gems are freaks, I question? But Sonia, I'm half gem. Did you think I was a freak? No, never, she yelled, but... I, I could never live like that. I always thought you were so strong being able to be both at the at a time, gem and human. But now you don't have to hide. You could fit in with Ronaldo taking pictures of people asking for help and monsters hassling you. We could be normal together, she smiled. We can even sing in the talent show. Look, your gem is a necklace. She brought out a mirror and showed me. I look so normal now, like an old version of the girl who fell in the hole. I had to stop myself from crying at it. I was started to forget what I looked like. She took the mirror away and reached hand for me. You don't have to be embarrassed. We could be confident together forever. Just leave those crystal gems and come with me to Himitsu. Doobie is there too. It'll be just like old times. I genuinely do not understand what is happening. I don't understand what is going on. None of this makes any sort of sense. Her hand was out, but I wasn't sure I wanted to take it, but being normal again, having a chance of being human, not having to fight, lose limbs, struggle, fight, cry, you just said fight. That was all I ever want, was not. I fought to feel safe and happy and at home with the only people I felt like I couldn't fit in with anymore. The crystal gems, but if I looked human and didn't have to rely on them anymore, I didn't need to anymore. I didn't have to lie about myself anymore. I could finally be strong in the real way. What? In the real way? What the fuck are you talking about? I took Sonya's hand and smiled, bigger than ever, as long as we could be Zexerite again on the way there. See, I wouldn't have minded an entire plotline where Morganite was manipulated by Himitsu into being on their side, but this is stupid. This is beyond stupid. This doesn't make any fucking sense. There was a meanwhile where Kunzite was paced around, swear in the temple. Flick gun in circles anxiously. Pearl showed up inside. Why are you still like this? We haven't heard from Morgan in a week. I'm worried. Oh, we've got a time skip. Okay. She would have popped in to say hi or something stupid by now, Kunzite said. Something's gotta be wrong. 
You know, you might just be right, Pearl said, with the Himitsu lately and her being weak and all. Who knows if she's safe with the humans anymore? Hey, Pearl, what's wrong? Then Bismuth showed up with a big scythe, but she swung it up and down and turned it turned into a big axe mid-swing. I've got Morganite's weapon. Where is that little rascal? She should be at home with her parents, but they're totally human, Pearl said. We can't just go to their door and ask for her. We'll look like kidnappers. I'll go, Steven jumped down from his room with his backpack on. I know Mr. and Mr. Thomas. They're friends of Connie's parents. They'll let me see her. I don't know, Steven. It might be dangerous. What if you run into Bloodstone, Pearl asked. I'll go with him, Coonsight said, and went to Steven. Morganite is my responsibility. I can't let her get hurt again, and it's personal with me and the Himitsu. And that's the end of chapter 21? There are two more chapters left. Two! I don't... I haven't had a whole lot to say about this story other than what the fuck, and nothing makes sense. But how the hell are you going to wrap up an entire, like, plot what little there is of it in two more chapters. Like, there's so much that still needs to be covered and talked about. You're just jumping from plot line to plot line, and it's obnoxious, especially when none of the plot lines even make any sense! But okay, that's it for this video, I guess. I hope you guys enjoyed! Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you are new! Because if you don't, I'm gonna steal your toes. Goodbye.